My name is uh, Kojo Hamilton from University of uh, Pitts, uh, Pittsburgh uh, School of Medicine. And let's see. So a little bit of the objectives that I'm going to talk about will be uh, the lumbar fracture overview, the classification systems, non-operative treatment, and also operative treatment. I want to first say that it's the most commonly injured portion of the uh, spinal column, 20 to 25% 20, uh, of all traumatic fractures in young adults. And there is a uh, uh, 5,000 about out of those 15,000 that have injuries a year. They have uh, significant neurological deficits. We're, okay. And why is the, uh, the, the fracture pattern is pretty significant. You, from T1 to T8 is the rigid portion. And uh, T92 is when you're transitioned to the mobile uh, segment um, where you have a lot of those injuries at the uh, thoracolumbar level. I uh, went from asking people individually questions until I realized that the, the uh, SSF Foundation, a lot of people do prep before they come to this meeting um, where they read up on things. So next year, we're going to transition to just questions. Okay, but I still have to do the CME required uh, introduction. This is all two, some of you are two years removed from this, some are seven years removed from it. Uh, but th here we go. So there's no universally agreed upon classification. We're moving a lot from you know, the sniff test, where if it looks bad, we probably have to do surgery to more of, let's have a simple language. Let's include uh, majority of injuries. Let's uh, have a, a mechanism of injury to, to deal with in terms of whether somebody needs an operative or non-operative. And also, th this classification should also determine your uh, treatment options. So we went from the traditional three column model, okay, anterior column from the anterior longitudinal ligament to the uh, middle of the uh, vertebral, uh, middle to, or should I say two thirds of the uh, vertebral body to the middle column where it was one third um, of the uh, remaining vertebral body uh, to the uh, posterior uh, longitudinal ligament and then the posterior columns. And a lot of fractures were identified in that uh, category where the anterior column we mentioned is that's being stable, the middle column fractures uh, possibly unstable, and also if you had inclusion of the uh, posterior column you mentioned uh, that's unstable, that needed operative treatment. So anterior column fractures, we have uh, things like compression fractures, the canal is intact, we can uh, treat that conservatively versus a stable uh, burst fracture which is include the middle column Neuro intact, uh, there, that's where you potentially have to evaluate and see if there's canal occlusion, angulation, comminution. Um, there's no posterior column injury, possibly intact. And then you have the unstable burst fracture, loss of body height, posterior column injury, spinal cord injury, uh, definitely uh, thinking about uh, surgery. And it gets worse, okay? Posterior ligamentous disruption, plus or minus body fracture, you may have to involve stabilization, okay? Let's make sure this is showing up well. Good. So fracture dislocation, you know, shear translation, dislocation, injury to all three columns. We're talking surgery. It's high incidence. The, initially, we then moved on to more neurological deficit classification using the uh, th thoracic lumbar injury uh, severity score. We wanted to move from just imaging and um, to more neurological deficit. And this in includes the uh, injury morphology, integrity of the support structures, the posterior lung to ligamentous complex, and also neurological status. And how many use this as their conversation piece when you're discussing amongst their colleagues in their programs? Telix versus how many uses the three column method? And how many use the AO classification system? Okay, good. Dr. Chapman, you, you use all three. Okay, good, good, okay. So um, the real thing is to identify what you're going to use, okay? Saying, are we using Telix AO versus the three column model? Stick with it in your practice program. And that way, if you're talking amongst your colleagues, uh, transfer uh, centers, you can have an idea of what exactly it means. And But I always tell people that I prefer to have some idea of the neurological compromise um, before we go for it. So I always like the TLIC system. So they have, you know, it's a, it's a scoring system where you go from compression fractures uh, to 
translational, rotational to distraction uh, injury for the injury morphology. Okay, you select one, give them a score, then you look at the posterior longitudinal complex. Uh, is it displaced, as you suspected, versus is injured? You can use the MRI, um, CT, or even plain x-rays, okay? And also, of course, the exam, log rolling patients, looking at how things look. And then you also have the neuro neurology point system, uh, ranging from zero to a three. So when you add all of that together, you also then add the clinical qualifiers. Does this person have an open fracture, distraction, uh, injury, ankylosing spondylitis dish? And also, do they have sternal fractures that will make a stable column be unstable? Okay, and also age and also general health. So you add all these together to get a scoring system. But the, those qualifiers are more of your decision making and not part of the scoring system. So three points or less, you're without any qualifiers. I mean, push them to surgery. Um, you consider it as non-operative injuries. With four points, you sort of dealer's choice, non-op versus operative. And then if you have points more than five, you, you think about surgery, unless there are some qualifiers that uh, send you the other way. So simply, this is the algorithm. Um, a few of you know it already. Um, and so we look at an application would be a 35-year-old male who fell from a ladder, has a burst fracture, given two points. Neurologically intact, zero points. A PLC intact, zero points. Total score two. Yes, there is some retropulsion, but there is non-operative treatment. Doesn't exactly mean that's it. You can consider bracing, upright imaging to see if there, if if things uh, uh, don't go your way. Okay. So then you also have burst fractures. Um, you know, 38-year-old MVA belter driver, complete paraplegia. So burst fracture, two points. Complete injury, two points. The ligamentous complex is distracted or disrupted. So three points, total score seven, operative. And this is where a lot of my colleagues say, well, I just used this sniff test. It looks bad. I probably should operate on it. I said, well, that's fair and dandy, but it's ideal to at least include in also your preoperative assessment some reference. Um, these sometimes may come with some legal issues. So it's a good idea to have some reference of your decision making um, to back you up especially early in your career, okay? So the t are it's e easy to uh, teach trainees. It's simple. Um, it considers most of the important decision points, which is neurological deficit, and I typically uh, like it. It's easy for somebody at uh, 2 a.m. to tell me, this is the deal, this is what we're doing, we'll have to assess later versus let's, let's plan on uh, first start, move things around, okay? So... Basically, you have to familiarize yourself with classification systems used in your institution. It's very, it's very vital. Um, get your trauma team involved in it, too. Um, no classification is perfect, and also surgical approach may be based on other factors. As I mentioned, the patient qualifiers, related issues, and also surgeon's preference. What, what is uh, the best surgery is the, is the safest surgery in your hands, okay? So I always have these cards available for trainees if they want it. Um, you guys are all pros at this now, so you've evolved. You can literally mention it. And I used to have this exercise where we have it and people go to the scores. But a lot of our, a lot of our uh, uh, boards are requiring us to sort of advocate for people to have some evidence-based approach to things or systematic approach to things, which at this point, the TLIC seems to be good. Five treatment goals. We want to prevent neurological de deterioration. Okay, so we want to promote recovery, stabilize the spine, restore anatomical alignment, and also we want to mobilize patients early, and that equates to minimizing their pain and, of course, deformity. So some options, you know, as I mentioned, if you have a compression fracture, we talk about bracing versus uh, vertebroplasty, kyphoplasty. Um, anybody know, does not know what vertebroplasty or kyphoplasty mean? Excellent. I love the fellows course. Everybody knows stuff. So stable burst fractures, okay? We, we were bracing the majority um, surgery. I have friends who are now even moving away from bracing. Uh, they're, they're sort of, they're doing fine. If they stand up, they go down for x-rays, they're standing. Um, I don't even brace them. They're sort of half and half. Uh, my issue has to do with the brace being less of a support if they don't need it versus a reminder of you're injured, Please don't go back on your ATV, motorcycle, 
or trying to lift a heavy laundry load, this is a reminder to say you are hurt and you need to heal. Okay. And if there's, there's always, once every five years, there's always a, a, a paper that comes out and says, well, bracing was not needed in half the patients. But I, I do like my crowd and where I practice, and I try to tailor the brace towards, I know if I don't give them reminders, they'll forget. Okay, so the unstable bearish fractures, is, it becomes, you, we need to operate. The question is, what are we going to do? Anterior, posterior, and then you're intact or incomplete or posterior for complete injuries, okay? This is because you need long construct, they'll be sitting in a wheelchair, they, they need to be supported for therapy, et cetera. If they have complete injuries, trunkal support is also lost. So that's a, a, a key. So, you know, if somebody has complete, it may be fun to do a lateral approach and fixate them, but you're not helping them in terms of trunkal support, uh, wheelchair, and also transfer. Um, they'll develop a huge, uh, focal kyphosis, and it's not a good idea to do that. And, and also, um, with uh, flexion distraction injuries, you may have to do 360 front, back, and back again, okay? So non-operative treatment for thoracolumbar fractures. It's not brace and I'll see you or have your PCP take it off. You have to see them back. You have to have frequent clinic visits, at least two um, post-discharge. You have to see if they have um, post-discharge pain, radiculopathy, kyphosis, especially when you're morbidly obese and they have multi-system injuries. If they, are, if they have orthopedic fractures where they're not going to be, they're going to be non-weight bearing, you're not off the hook till they are weight bearing to see what they really can do. So brace or not to, or brace or surgery, neurological intact patient, less than 40% height loss, um, they're compliant, um, they could understand you based on your mental status, education, age, no dementia, and also the circumstances of the accident. You know, um, people can make bad choices or have unfortunate incident, but if somebody um, is completely unable to follow through, I, I'm thinking of and not bracing them if, if they're sitting on a fence on a scoring system. Less than 10 degrees of kyphosis on upright imaging. All, all of those are sort of my pearls, my essentials to decide, I wanna brace this person, even though they may be sitting on a fence for bracing or not bracing, okay? Or bracing or surgery, okay, or not up. So studies have compared both anterior, posterior, um, and there's no doubt equivalent in neurological outcomes. Um, there's a tendency for less kyphosis with posterior um, versus, uh, versus anterior, which makes sense from a structural anatomical view. But for me, if you have poor bone quality, there's more failure with short segment uh, posterior uh, instrumentation for either, either or. There are more points of fixation. You may require anterior column support. And this goes to patients who have failed vertebroplasty, kyphoplasty, uh, you know, densely osteoporotic, and maybe it's even small pedicles. If you don't have good, robust pedicles for anchoring, I tend to shy away from short constructs, okay? And also patients who need long constructs include those who have uh, primary bone disease, ankylosing spondylitis, dish, rheumatoid arthritis, and also the severely malnourished. I, this is uh, essential to do it. So looking at this uh, simple case, this will be easy. 30-year-old male motor vehicle collision, back pain, decreased motor sensory function at T12, and also they have negative other trauma scans. Can somebody sort of give me a idea? On the physical examination, they have a thoracolumbar pain, may have a palpable defect posteriorly, motor strain two out of five below iliopsoas, diminished sensation below T12 level, intact uh, perianal pinprick sensation. Coach, do you want to pick somebody? Or do you want to pick somebody? Oh, I, like I want to volunteer. You don't want to volunteer? No, I, I do want to volunteer. It would be. Somebody who's nodding off or? No, no. Is that an automatic sign of volunteerism if you nod off? It, that might be a good idea. Yeah, okay. I do. So are you going to pick somebody then? or I'm, I'm leaving it up to you to pick somebody. Oh, okay, it seems good, like good. You, you wanted to pick somebody. No, I didn't. Let's hear, <laughs> let's hear something from a German colleague. Uh -huh. Okay, good. Can you introduce yourself? Yes. Hello, I'm Nicholas Ross. As it was just said, I'm from Germany. I'm a resident for orthopedic surgery. <clears throat> yes, I'm a resident for orthopedic surgery from Germany. Welcome. From Dusseldorf. Thanks. Um, well, 
Um, I think you just saw me uh, lift my hand up when you mentioned AO. I have no experience with Telix, but we learned um, AO. Oh, good. So, um, what would is, you say from the AO? What would you um, say? Yeah, well, without a CAT scan, I can tell you for sure, but I think it's an uh -huh. A3, so basically it's a uh, it's, uh, There you uh, go. Stable. There's your CAT scan. Okay. So, no, it does look like an unstable burst fracture, and so an A4. Um, so, yeah, retropulsion of a fragment, I would basically say it's, it needs surgery. So, would need to so be So, you would say it's an A, A4. A4, yes. okay, that's good. All right, anybody want to volunteer at Telix? You have all the information you need. There's the MRI. Um, there's this, uh, you know, so there we go. Oop, before I give the game away. So let's do this. So, what would you say injury morphology? What 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 what's the score you're gonna give? Should we do the lecture again? Just say, come on, guys. Somebody volunteer quickly. Just a quick point. I don't know. I mean, everybody is otherwise familiar. Go with ahead. Help. Yeah. Okay. What's the for injury morphology? I will give two. You give Best two. Why? Fracture. Okay. Uh, for posterior ligamentous complex, I will give three. Good. It's injured. We have incomplete motor. Yeah. So I will give him three. Okay. So I will give him eight. Eight. So surgery. So we're in agreement. Right? We're AO and t is in agreement that this person needs surgery. Now, if we were going to look at a three column, it definitely has got a, uh, a significant, uh, you know, distracting, uh, you know, flexion distraction injury. Um, so he warrants with, with neurological compromise. So he warrants uh, surgical intervention, de decompressed stabilization. Um, so, what would you what would you want to do, Hans? Bilal, do you want to stay with it? What would you do in Jerusalem? Okay, uh, I will do posterior decompression and uh, fusion. And fusion. Long construct, yeah. Okay, long construct. Okay. Um, okay, that's good. Anybody would do anything different? Anybody want to approach this laterally and and decompress and put an expandable cage? Okay, Dr. Chapman says no. I think I'll go with Dr. Chapman. Okay, so that that's that's a good that's a good option. But it's sort of like when you sit back and think about it, it it, it helps you make these decisions. Now that was easy. Um, in in the um, in most of the exercises, you have to think about what if it's a little harder. What if it's not very clear? They sort of are braced, and then always go get your upright imaging or stand them up before you send them away. Okay, regardless, you've already checked to make sure that the foley is out, they don't have cord equina injuries. Then the next step is, do they have a horrible kyphosis? Is their posterior ligamentous complex completely disrupted, et cetera? Things that you have to watch is infections with operations, implant failures, adjacent level disease, iatrogenic injury, and of course, lawsuits, right? That's a reason why a whole lot of people don't like to do trauma because some people, uh, unfortunately, um, have events that pertain them in a civil society to take matters to, to court. So you always have to make sure your documentation when it comes to trauma is, and almost everything you do now in medicine, is uh, up to par, very clear, and has a good, nice time stamp because of lawsuits. And I wish I could say we're not going to talk about it, but it's, it's a fact. Okay. So in conclusion, you have to have a uniform language or for discussing the same injury. If you're using AO, that's great. Telix, great. If you're using a three column, uh, that's great too. Make sure you always have a neurological component to that, okay? And then have a plan and stick to it, but have a backup for the uh, unexpected. No savoring of your cases, in the negative persistence. Always have a check. If I'm doing this procedure, I'm doing this fusion, it's not working. Whereas when is when am I going to stop? You know, negative persistence is when you end up in you know three liters cc after you've uh, realized that that person you exposed. Um, yes, they had a negative uh, CT scan, but on exposure, they may have a not a segmental but a major artery, and things are not going well. It's time to stop, get them stabilized. Okay, and also have an excellent trauma service. 
education is key. Thank you. All right, thank you.